Okay, I'll, as, uh, as I have been doing, I'll call it in, on you in twos. Uh, let's start with Anthony Dasher, followed by Mark Weiser. Hey, Mark, good to see you. How you doing? Good, I, I got to ask you about, about Kyle Pitts. I know, I know y'all know each other pretty well, if I'm not mistaken. And just, uh, how, what'd you, how much, you, what do you see in the progress he's made where he's at right now in his career? And just kind of what y'all were like, you know, growing up. How, much, how well did you know him? I know him pretty well growing up. Uh, we trained together for a long period of time. I would say, shoot, for a long, long time he was training. Uh, and it's just like, just crazy the improvement that he got to now. I remember when he probably couldn't catch his old now. He catching every pass that come to him. You get, what I'm <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Like it's crazy. Like just to see him, just see, just to see him blossom on a level that he. So, so he used to not be able to catch balls at all. Tell me about that. What happened? I mean, he could catch, but it, it just wasn't how it is now. Like, it was, <laughs> Thanks. Hey, Mark. Wanted to ask you about um, kind of the uh, the mood in the secondary without Richard this week. Um, you know, how has the team kind of rallied around? Uh, you know, uh, you know, going forward without him and, and the adjustments you guys have had to make back there. Uh, we rally as a team. Like normally, when things like this happen, there's always next man up mentality. You get what I'm saying? And I feel like the team's doing well right now. I feel like we got the guys that came in. The person that was behind him, Chris Smith. He's came in and he's been watching film. He's been doing everything he needs to do to get the task done this week. So I feel like we, we're in a good position. Thank you. Okay, let's go to Connor Riley, followed by Seth Emerson. Yeah, Mark, you mentioned Chris there. What have you sort of seen from him this week as he's preparing to make his first start? And what do you think he does well as a player? Uh, I feel like Chris is a very vocal player. He's a very physical player, and that's what you want in, as a safety or somebody that's next to you on a, in the defensive backfield. Like he's very vocal, and, he, you know, he does, he does his job very well. You get what I'm saying? He's definitely ready for the opportunity that's in front of him. Mark, I'm most interested in whether you're going to be lined up on uh, – uh, but I'm sure that you're not going to tell me the defensive plan. But the what is the overall difference between – Florida when they have a guy like him, like Pitts, and Alabama when they had all that speed on the outside? Uh, when you got a guy like Kyle, it's just like you can put him anywhere. You get what I'm saying? He's making plays from all over the field, one, two, three. You put him anywhere tight end. You get what I'm saying? He's blocking. You, get, you just don't know when he's going to attack. He's going to attack from, and that can make it hard as a, uh, as a defense. Okay, let's go to Jake Rowe, followed by Bailey Johnson. I'm good, Sam. I don't have anything. Okay, Bailey. I'm also good. Sorry. That's quite all right. Uh, let's see. Chip Towers, followed by Mike Griffith. Yeah, Mark, I'm, I'm never going to pass up the uh, possibility to ask a question. Just uh, Florida's offense overall, I mean, it, you know, it is Kyle Pitts. It's a lot of other things, too. Uh, Kadarius Tony's really done a, a good job this year. Um, defensively, can you compare this challenge to perhaps what you saw against Alabama? And how much of a motivation is that? You know, Georgia has a great defense. Florida has a good offense. How much of a motivation is that as opposed to, you know, top ten matchup and SEC's championship? Uh, just to think about it, like, Florida is a very explosive offense. And just like Bama, they're a very explosive offense. And it's very hard to aerate and just put everybody out. And you know what I'm saying? When you got a lot of talent and every position you got somebody that can make a play, it makes it very hard on defense like ours. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like Florida's pretty good. It, just to be clear, it, you play in the star. You, you will draw Kyle Pitts a, a, quite a few times probably during the game, right? Definitely. If he lines up there, yeah. Unmute yourself, Mike. Yeah. Uh, hey, Mark. Uh, we were talking a little bit about last year's game, and, and Pitts and Trask are a constant. But when I look at the box score, I see a lot of new guys out there that I didn't see last year. Can you just talk about how similar Florida looks? Do they look completely reloaded? And, and I've heard some Florida writers suggest that, that uh, Tony may be uh, – almost as explosive as Waddle was. Does he look that dynamic to you? And what do they look like, even though there's new names and numbers out there? 
I, I feel like everybody on Florida, everybody that lines up at receiver in Florida is good. You get what I'm saying? They deserve their respect. And I feel like Tony's just as good as – I mean, I feel like Tony's Tony. You get what I'm saying? Why? And Waddle is Waddle. But Tony is a very great player himself. He's very explosive. I think he's very slept on, but he's definitely explosive. Okay, let's go to Jillian McIntyre, followed by Palmer Combs. Hey, Mark. Um, how do you think Florida-Georgia ranks among all of Georgia's rivalries, in your opinion? I would probably say it's the biggest one. Because, I mean – I always look at it as the biggest one because it's the next one. But, it, you know, when it gets around this time, you just feel it. You just feel it's different. You know, every time we play Florida, I mean, it's not like any, like arguing or anything going on. It's just it just feels different when we get to this week. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it's, every game is a big game, but this game, I feel like this will be the biggest. Yeah, Mark, with Richard, with, uh, with Richard out and you being a senior in the secondary, do you feel like, you're someone that has to take on more of a responsibility in terms of the uh, vocalness and, and communication, or is that something that falls on the person who takes uh, Richard's position? Uh, no, uh, you know, being a DB at Georgia, we probably everybody on, like, you know, stepping up and being leaders. So there's really no, like, fallout or anything. Like, we expect everybody to be vocal, you know what I'm saying, and hold their own, you know what I'm saying, and, like, be where their feet are. So it's just like, you know, next man up, and then whoever's in, communicate. You know, my job is to communicate to him, and he communicates back to me, and that makes the play. Okay, we've got time for two more questions. We'll go to Brandon Sudge, followed by Lance McCurley. Hey, uh, Mark, to uh, follow up on Richard and his injury, um, can you kind of take me through what your emotions are, what the emotions were personally as you – um, heard that news. Um, how have you kind of kept in touch with him? Like, um, so what, so what was the whole situation uh, like? It was a uh, it was a very touching experience. I I didn't know what to do at the time, but I definitely it's crazy. I just seen it today. You know what I'm saying? He was good. You know what I'm saying? All I could do at the time was pray for him. You know what I'm saying? I hope that he get through this situation and be better than he was when he before it even happened. So when he uh, came up to six feet off this afternoon, can you tell me what what that all was like? For because after he's been in the hospital, Carl, this time us. I, it was, I mean, I'm just happy to see him. You know what I'm saying? Happy to see him walking around doing what he needs to do. You know what I'm saying? Getting treatment and everything. Because I know, you know, he's better than what he was before. You know what I'm saying? It could be worse. You know what I'm saying? So I just thank God that he's in a position that he's in now. to be able to get treatment, get everything, and get all his cars and everything cleaned up. Hey, Mark. Uh, I, someone may have asked this already, but I just – you being a senior, and you know, especially Richard, being out, obviously, uh, and you being from Philadelphia, us as first, did you have any, like, idea how big the Georgia Florida game was before you got here and uh, just how it's how it's elevated uh, because this is could possibly decide the SEC East. So what does it mean this year, especially when you're a senior? Uh, when I first came in, I really didn't know anything about it. But, like, now, like, when, you, that, when, you, when you're here, you definitely know. The, you know what I'm saying, the level of, like, just the, the uproar of the game. You just know that this is the biggest game, one of the biggest games, and, you know, we're both two two top teams in the East, you know what I'm saying, and, and whoever wins could normally go to the championship. So, you know, this is a big game for us.